First thing is first, the Internet Archive has lost a lawsuit. From what I understand about this, um, this was not unexpected. Uh, the Internet Archive, a nonprofit organization that runs uh, archive.org and hosts about 50 petabytes of uh, digital media on their servers, um, was sued by four different book publishing companies because they tried to make the internet equivalent of a library. And the publishing companies did not take to this lightly, so they sued for copyright infringement. Uh, I believe it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and they lost. So the direct, the I think there's a little direct quote here. It says, uh, there is nothing transformative about the Internet Archive's copying and unauthorized lending of the works in the suit, the judge writes. The story, oh, not the Supreme Court, a federal judge. So they could probably appeal it to the Supreme Court. However, I don't think that that would make any difference because um, I believe they will lose this regardless of what they do. Uh, this is uh, a write-up from file770.com in case you would like to read this. But the gist is that they, they've lost that. And it, it is it is frustrating because it's like what is what is really the difference between what they do and what a library does? I guess a library keeps a permanent physical copy, so you have to give it back. You can't just like keep it on your shelves. Um you would imagine that maybe book publishers would would um perhaps tolerate this, but on the other hand I feel like if the, like for instance, YouTube has access to basically every song ever made now because they've struck deals with all the publishers. I feel like maybe if they had worked pro, uh, proactively with these publishers, they might've been able to come to an amicable agreement. It's different with like the Kiwi Farms. I'm, the content we host is, is hostile to um, publishers and OnlyFans horrors, for instance. So, and, and, you know, people who make videos and content. So that is, in one hand makes it so I can't proactively try and help anyone in any way. But on the other hand, the fact that it is a hostile relationship between the creator and the forum provides me a great benefit in regards to fair use because um, as it was, the, the Sargon case is actually really important here because in the Sargon case, he uploaded a clip that just sort of reduced down somebody speaking to, you know, a minute of them talking to try and highlight contradictions in what they said. And the judge literally said that because that clip was present on Sargon's channel, that contributed to a transformative aspect of fair use. So if I take a video and I upload it to the Kiwi Farms, there's already a great benefit of fair use there because it's on the Kiwi Farms, which is inherently a critical place. So um, the Internet Archive didn't have that benefit, and that's why they lost. However, uh, as I don't want to shit on I try, me personally, not a favor of rights holders. I'm I'm actually so annoyed with copyright at this point. If copyright was abolished entirely, I wouldn't cry. Um, I'm just not surprised. However, uh, the flip side of this is that they really, really hate this guy named Chuck Windig. Windig, um, depends on who you ask, supposedly um, was a reason why this lawsuit started to begin with. So John Hendren says, this is the guy whose writing is so valuable he destroyed the Internet Archive. Thank you, Chuck Windig. And Windig writes... Uh, Wednesday, the day you flumpity foo, and you think boopity bop and zippity zoom, but the truth is Raza Frazza was a wooza. What I'm trying to say is maybe your brain isn't working either, but that's okay because you're great. P.S. You need a firmware upgrade in the form of coffee. Uh, so this is a man whose writing was impacted by the Internet Archive and their digital library of written works, and he felt very strongly about that. Um... Let me read this one, actually. This was one of the initial tweets that got him in trouble. He said, at NPR, because NPR was talking, we did an article about, hey, this is great. This is like a, um, this is a, the middle of the pandemic. Libraries are closed because that's a public place and that could spread the virus that we're trying to, to get over, right? 
Uh, so they say library books are maybe a no-go these days, but the nonprofit Internet Archive is keeping digital bookshelves stocked to the end of national coronavirus crisis. Chuck Wendig takes issue with this and says, Dear NPR, uh, hey, hi, this is a pirate website. It's not legit. What the fuck are you doing? And uh, that is why he is in the crosshairs uh, for criticism regarding the the Internet Archive lawsuit, which does not have popular uh, opinion. Uh, but as far as popular opinion, the one particular author uh, is elated to hear this news that these evil pirates have been uh, destroyed in this lawsuit. My boy, Patrick Tomlinson. As a as a important sci-fi author himself, he knows the importance of protecting his works from copyright thieves, such as the Internet Archive. So he has come out in support of this decision. Stalker child, pirate stalker child. You cannot download my books. You cannot freely distribute my books to the public. That is fascism, stalker. Uh, so this guy is saying, uh, I think he is, oh, he works with the Internet Archive. He says, hello, lowercase i, Internet. I'm a librarian at the uppercase i, Internet Archive. Important reminder that Chuck Windig is not involved in the publisher's lawsuit, has spoken out against the lawsuit, and has spoken out in support of the Internet Archive. Be mad at the publishers. Um, so... It's unclear if maybe he was just like a retard. He doesn't seem to have a good brain. So he's like, oh, fuck these guys. And then he realizes, oh, it's just a library. That's fine. Um, but he says in reply to this that, uh, or later on in 2022, he actually signed a um, appeal, a, uh, what do you call those things? A petition. Would you like to sign my petition? He did like to sign the petition, and the petition was in support of an archive against his own publisher, which is a bit of a ballsy move, but um, it didn't work, obviously. Now, if I'm sounding a little bit of a Debbie Downer in regards to the Internet Archive, that is because I have a good reason to. Some of you may remember this, but the Internet Archive completely and totally blacklists the entire Kiwi Farms domain. If you go to archive.org and you try to open the Kiwi Farms or any link in their archive, they say that they have it stored somewhere in their massive 52 petabytes of data, but you will not be able to find it because they've delisted it from their, their way back machine. Uh, in fact, the Internet Archive has direct links to Taylor Lorenz's family. Uh, which is, if you don't remember, Taylor Lorenz is the, I think, Washington Post journalist who doxed uh, Libs at TikTok and personally visited her family's house to try and intimidate them into silence over the trans shit. Uh, somehow managed to pull some strings during Drop Kiwi Farms to get uh, Daddy's Internet Archive company to stop listing um, archive pages of the Kiwi Farms. So forgive me if I'm not crying big boo-hoo sob-sob tears, but they're kind of fucking losers. And maybe if they did their job and didn't selectively decide that they're going to not archive shit, maybe I'd feel bad for them. But I don't know. I don't. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.